today I'm here with Sal Manzana, legend in the paint game. Over 40 plus years in the paint in the paint industry. Uh -huh. Talent, incredible. It's an honor, it's a pleasure to be here interviewing you on Toxic Prides today. Thank you. So what I want to do is get into your story a little bit and kind of let everybody know about you and, and your history with Low Ride. So um, the first question that I want to ask you is, being that your father was a painter, how much influence did he have on you becoming a painter yourself? Uh, you know, us Latinos, us Mexicans, mm -hmm. we always had a body and paint guy in the family. I right. think to this day, it's like that. Right. <laughs> and I just liked it because, you know, it was my dad doing it. And, you know, he was my first person. He was the first person that, that you know, told me about painting and body work and sanding and all that stuff. And so you started off young. Yeah, I was 10 years old. I got three other brothers besides me. Okay. And All painters? No. Just, uh, <laughs> you know, this, this, the way I, I got into painting because of my dad. My, mm -hmm. my dad worked at a dealership. Right. You know, in, in, in National City. And one day, I remember I was 10 years old. I still remember. Because mm -hmm. there's three other brothers and me. Okay. So my younger brother which is, you know, he's too young to hang out with the two older brothers. Gotcha. You know? So my, my, uh, when, uh, my dad had told three of my brothers, mm -hmm. two and me, and they, he put us, he put us in the, the living room and he, he had to choose one out of the three for, 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 for he can, he can use to learn how to, prep and clean and do right. whatever around the right. shop because my dad had a little shop with okay. another guy with another guy and he says well so i think you're gonna be, you're gonna be the one <laughs> to go with me after you leave after you um, school after mm -hmm. school so i was the chosen one out of the three the chosen one great yeah. pick. he had a good eye <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing a tribute board to Benny Flores. Mm -hmm. From my understanding, he was the one that took you under his wing and helped you develop your skills. Can you tell me a little bit about how you met him and you two, you, you guys' relationship? When I met him, I was in, uh, I was at the beginning of junior high. Okay. You know, and in order back in those days, of course, we didn't have cell phones or none like that, right. or even right. beepers, I think. So, and I had my first girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, in order for me to see my girl after school or after, you know, trying to uh -huh. meet with her, we would pay ten cents to my nearest, the nearest uh, uh, phone. Little pay phone. Yeah, pay phone. <laughs> were like ten cents. Remember that? Right. Uh, I don't even know if they're still around. I haven't seen one in forever. <laughs> so I'm walking, and then the close, the closest phone mm -hmm. was about uh, two blocks away from my house. So I had to go through this alley to get to the nearest phone. Uh -huh. And that's when I met Benny. I was really? walking towards the alley and I see this. I'm walking and uh, I didn't know that there was a shop there, but it was more of a, sh more of a, a garage. Right, right. So, he opened, I mean, it was open when I walked by and mm -hmm. he was doing a mural when I met Benny. He was doing a mural on a, a, a Cordoba. I still remember. <laughs> you know? A lot of people don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those weird Chrysler lowriders back gotcha. in those days. Yeah, right. Rare, you know? but it, they were out there. They definitely were out there. So I'm walking and I see this guy doing a mural, man. Like, I've never seen that done, uh -huh. you know? So I stopped and I just looked because I've never seen someone do art like that. Right. I, was, you know, I think I was 13. That's like 13 years old. You know, it's a long time ago because right, right. right now I'm, I'm going to be 55 this, next month. So that's a lot of yeah, that's years. That's a long time. Yeah. A lot, yeah. Of, a lot of span in between. Yeah. And then to now. Yeah. And then th th that's how I met him. I uh, I just stood there and watched him. And I remember 
he turned around and looked at me. <laughs> he turned around. <laughs> he turned around and looked at me, and I looked at him, and I said in in, in, in Spanish, "Hey, cómo está? Está mm, bonito." He looked at me. I don't know Spanish. <laughs> okay, because he looked Mexican. Right. Right. But, you know, but a lot of people don't know this. Benny is Filipino. Right. And 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 half Filipino and half white. The reason he has the name Flores because that that's his his dad is Filipino and uh -huh. and then and then the Philippines they use that word in Spanish a lot. Flores is a common name in the Philippines. Yeah, but uh, he didn't know no. He knew about burritos and tacos, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's how I met Benny. After you got with Benny. I know that for years you was a traveling painter. Now, what were some of the best or the worst experience that you had painting on the road? Well, uh, I really haven't had no bad experiences because mm -hmm. everybody's been really cool as I used to travel right. a lot back in the nineties. Just that one incident, a uh, one incident where uh, there was the a, Indiana story. Yeah, the Indiana story. Uh, I really don't like to get into that, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, 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 there's people that would, there's a lot of people that go through it, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, it was funny. It was weird for me because, right. you know, I come from Los Angeles, well, you could say Los Angeles, San right. Diego, you right. know, and going into Indiana, and then there was racism. Right. You know, there was racism out there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I left. With three guys mm -hmm. going to, I don't know where, I was two, three hours away from Indiana. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I got to experience to see a sign that said Click Clan, mm -hmm. you know, meeting and stuff. And, and it freaked me out because you don't see that in California. I had to pull over and tell the guys that what's going on here, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here to. Three hours away from Indiana, don't know no one. I have these three guys here, mm -hmm. you know, and then I see that, and it scared me. It's like the first time I really was scared, you know, right? As mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere, exactly, exactly. Like, and they just say, "Hey, listen, man, kick rocks, man, right. take a walk." Um, you know what I mean? You just, right. You just don't know. That's true. And that was scary for me, but it turned out to be a really good. Right. Well, two three days afterwards. <laughs> so, yeah. so everything kind of got ironed out between yeah. you and the yeah and the guy who wanted his car painted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Actually, yeah. <laughs> so everything got and the guy is crazy because you know yeah, these are all three white guys, you know. And, right. And those guys, I guess, some had family of the clan. I guess you can say, uh -huh. and and them, you know, the guys were all bumping rap music. You know what I mean? Right. And then, it just trips me out that exactly. the influence of law writing, what has, you know, what, look what it's done to guys. Look, yep. you know, just the influence of like, oh, I like that car. And then they, the music. Right. You know, the, the whole culture, everything that yeah. surrounds it, it, it mm. kind of changes through the generation. Yeah. Of the people and I think that's what happened it. to Japan. I think the Japanese. Mm hmm. The reason they got into low riding, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, because I was, I, I, I'd been lucky because, I mean, look at, look at me, I, at 77, I really started exploring low riders uh -huh. at 10 years old, right. which was the Mecca low riding in Los Angeles, exactly. and, you know what I mean? So that influence, I must, some, maybe some kid came from Japan and to LA and it's like, uh, I want that, or wow, well, look at that, and that just it took off. It can influence generations. Yes, it, it really can. Once you're exposed to it, then it's no stopping it. But you have to be out there showing it. Yeah. But that, yeah, it, it can influence a, a change in a lot of people. Yeah. And like with with the situation, it did to these guys. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It, it's just one of those things that. Even now, today, I feel like it's making a comeback, but it could be a lot bigger than what it is. As long as we push our influence 
on other cultures so they can see what we're doing. Uh, well, you know, today look at the, the um, lowrider role models that you see now. Uh huh. You know, I mean, like, oh, who would have thought that a, you know, a a judge would be into lowriding? Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or a CEO. You know. A, a you know? True. And uh, it's because of yeah. our arts of low writing has brought that. It's not True. because of the car itself. It's a lifestyle. Exactly. You know, because at, at, the, at the end of the day, is beautiful art. It is, man. Now, something everybody want to know. Are you still painting cars? Uh, as long as I've been around, I don't, I, I, I have to give it up. But mm -hmm. I just do a little bit. Um, I'm sure all you guys know that I've had strokes. And uh, uh, I have one eye now. I mean, I don't have one eye. Is blind, but I'm still the eye still there, but there's no, there's no vision no more. Okay. So I, I have to do just one eye, which is nothing, nothing. This, you know, that's the way God works. Right. I'm still here. I'm still doing what I do. I just can't push myself no more like I used to when I was young. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah, I, I still have that joy of creating and. Doing an uh, old school paint job. Uh huh. Yeah, I but I have to give it up. That's heartbreaking. I know you, you. If you could, you would still do it. Yeah. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. And now today we are here in Atlanta for the Masters of the Art Lowrider and Paint Class, and you were one of the special guests to come in. So how how does it feel knowing that you can actually help and teach some of these guys some of the art and skill and pass it on? Uh, I've always tried to do that, man. Even even in the in the middle eighties, mm -hmm. Benny would tell me, "It's for everybody, man." Only, there there's a little arrogance on some people, man, that they want to teach. At least back in the day, because mm -hmm. it there wasn't a lot of painters back then. Right. Back in those days, you can count the painters. Let's mm -hmm. say there were ten of them. True. Look at how are they now? There's a lot of us through the the internet changed everything. Right. You know, and uh, Benny always told me, you know, teach anybody, man. I taught you and just keep on doing what you do, you know, and yeah, that's why I'm here. That's why I've been to other states and done a couple of classes. That's why whenever I go to a state, uh -huh. I've always had guys wanting to learn from me. That helped me out because, right. you know, less work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and it was great. I, I I like that joy of helping, of teaching someone, you know. Right. But at the end of the day, they have to, they have to learn by themselves. But you, but you give them that, that tool. Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean. Correct. And you just do what you got to do to help these guys out. Because I, I I don't like guys that don't want to teach. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of people that they don't want to give you the time of day. Teaching hiding secrets like. Even yeah. with me, I don't, I'll never hide secrets because I have my way of doing it. Let somebody else advance on it if they can. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you anything. It, it doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. And you have some people who want to learn and some don't. The ones who want to learn, you know. Yeah. You already know. It is, but you know what? It is incredible because you get, you know, over the years, I've taught a lot of guys. Mm hmm. I shouldn't say a lot, but enough guys. Uh huh. When you knew right away which guys were gonna be around or just doing it for themselves for doing a car, and that's mm -hmm. that. You know, um, I'll, I'll give you a good example. Okay. You know, for what two twenty twenty two. You know, and 
there's this kid that I had met when he was 19. He runs our shop now. Okay. His name is Jonathan Mercado. You know, and I knew that when I met him, he was only like, I think he was only 19 or 18. He was already doing pin scraping. Okay. You know, yeah, he you know how to paint. You know, and uh, within a year that he was there with me, a year and a half, uh -huh. he learned everything from me, man. But he had that joy. He, he wanted that, I can learn how to do this from this right. guy. Yeah. You, know, you know, and today, I mean, the guy is everywhere in the country. He's been a couple TV shows now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just as, you know, because he's that good now. And he's in Lifestyle Car Club. And and uh, <laughs> I remember when he has Riviera. Uh -huh. So when he started that car, I don't know if you know his Riviera. If you follow Jonathan Mercado I'm, Instagram. I'm, if I see it, I'll know it. I'll yeah. see it, I'll know it. Well, when... Uh, when he finished the car and it, it, it unveiled at the National Roadster Show, mm -hmm. the few people were telling them, did you paint it or did, or did Sal paint it? And then he <laughs> liked that. Yeah. He got all mad at me because I didn't go to the Roadster Show. I didn't go. Really? Yeah. He was all mad because it's like I'm his, like a mentor to him. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And he wanted, you know, he wanted me there. To unveil that car at the right, but I I, I didn't go, and and then the reason and the reason I told him he got all mad for about a week. He didn't talk to me. He was all pissed off, you know. And it's like, well, come you didn't go, man. You were the you were my inspiration, man. You know, I said, listen, man. I didn't want people to tell you that either you or me painted it. I wanted you to be do it. I wanted, and you did. He did everything himself. I just watched him. <laughs> yeah, because you know, and uh, it, it, and that tells you something, because he he had you know, he has that in him, and it wasn't because of me; it was him. Right. But he just learned what I taught him, mm -hmm. and you know, going back to right now, we're in Atlanta. You know what I mean? Right. It's great to let a lot of these guys, you know, uh. So they know that, hey, you know what? This guy can do it. I mean, look, and he really didn't much, but he did it. Right. And, and to have kids like him, you know, uh, already mainstream law writing, uh -huh. you know, just because he got influenced. But it's kind of cool, I think, right there. With you being one of the OGs in the game with a career spanning well over 40 years, how did it feel in 2016, when your peers inducted you into the Lowrider Hall of Fame. Wow. That was great. Um, <laughs> especially for my kids. Right. And I got three, four other boys. Uh -huh. You know, plus my daughter. You know. I really have one, one, one kid, but mm -hmm. um, I have four stepkids. Okay. I think they were little, they were young, they were kids. Mm -hmm. So to them, I'm their dad. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, because I never expected that. I never expected to even look anything like that. I just love what I've done. And uh -huh. it was great to, re to uh, paint a lot of these cars and for them to, I, I do remember though, that uh, I would go to car shows uh -huh. like in LA and, and uh, sometimes in San Francisco, because I won a couple of times, you know, I think Arizona. Uh -huh. And people remember my cars. You know what I mean? Because right. that was our social media, our exactly. car, our cars, car our car shows and our, our car, was, you know, it was the social mm -hmm. media. People would know like, oh, that guy was from, Al oh, that guy was from Fresno. Right. You know, they remembered that. Right. You know, so as far as... uh the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess a lot of people remembered that. Yes. That's why they said well deserved when they came, when they told me that I was wanted. They really wanted was. to be, you know. And I say uh, a lot of them said <laughs> overdue, but I don't. I didn't see it like that. I just like, man, I just like what I do, man. You know. It's just it's just such a a good thing where 
all everyone in the low rider community that has something to do with that brought your name up yeah. as a mention and you were picked that that just shows that the guys who are really into this knows your talent and knows knows your worth and the and your contribution yeah. in the low rider game there's something special man yeah thank something you something special yeah i didn't go <laughs> i didn't go it's just like I was busy then somewhere, you know. I told him I think it was Wild Ch Wild Cherry or Wild Child. I think that's the guy that does the uh, Hall of Fame. Okay. Yeah, he sent it. He sent it. He sent it again. Oh, really? Yeah, before COVID. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I, well, of course, we couldn't do it, you know. Right. Yeah, but hopefully, maybe the third time. All right, and with the interview ending, I want to know, do you want to give any shout outs to anyone? Because I know you've been around. You might have a lot of them to say, but a lot who, of them. Who, who you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, my, uh, every painter out there right now, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, uh, has a passion to learn and to create and to do whatever, but, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thank God first. Okay. Without him. You know, it's hard not to. You gotta have. You, you gotta have. Uh, you gotta make time for him because we don't. Uh, I'll tell you. Right. You know, uh, you're you are you a Christian? Yes, I am too. Yes. You know, I'm a born and Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm not a perfect Christian, uh, but but I. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know, so um, my family. Mm -hmm. My dad, you know, and all my customers, man. There's just too many. Right. Understandable. Long There's, time in the game. Man. <laughs> you know, I still get guys calling me 20 years later to tell, how you been? How you doing? Especially now that I have my strokes. Mm -hmm. I have guys that are just loyal, man. You know, and it's just sometimes I forget that, you know, because I, I don't like no nothing from no one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. I'm just grateful to do what I do. And grateful that I, uh, how do you say, uh, became friends to, a lot of my customers became friends. Mm -hmm. I really don't have friends. <laughs> right. do, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, right. Like how we go to a place and, because we're in this low rider world. Right. You know, they're, People that have their lowrider world and then their family. Exactly. This has always been my family. Every single. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm trying to get at? Yeah. I you do. Know, that's why uh, it's hard for me to. I thank everybody, man. Everybody that's in in that loves this. You know, but yeah, there's there's quite a bit of guys. Mark, I'll tell you real quick. Mark Pyle. Mm -hmm. That that guy's always been straight up an incredible uh, customer with his family to me, you uh -huh. know. Um, of course, Mercado, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Jose Sandejas is another guy from Lifestyle. Always been, you know, incredible guy. There's guys that call me up. There's a bunch of people that sometimes call me. And luckily, mm -hmm. I haven't had no calls. I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> you know? But... They just want to know how I'm doing. We don't right. talk about cars, a lot of them. I, we I always check on good people. Man. Yeah. Always. And you're a good person. Mm, thank so you. Gotta look out. Yeah. Gotta look out. But yeah, uh, I'm telling you, it's been a great run. I just hopefully I don't die soon. Because, you know, I'll be honest with you, I sometimes feel that, you know, because of four strokes, that's a lot, man. Right. Right. You know, and sometimes. I, I, I don't, I don't talk to God as much as I should. Mm -hmm. But I know m my uh, my angel. We all have angels, man. You know that. Mm -hmm. I sometimes I think he pushes me like, "Hey, dude, you got, we got to go, man." Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Wow. And I'm being serious about that. You know, uh, so yeah, uh, but uh, I, I pretty, I had some pretty good, well, I shouldn't pretty good, I had some serious uh, uh, 
afterlife, you can say. Mm -hmm. Situations. Okay. Did I say that right? Yeah. You know, like an afterlife can, experience. Yeah. It's hard for me to talk about, bro. I, I, but I just remember one thing. We're in this world. We don't, you know, you got to thank God a lot right. for what we have because there's other people in this world that will never see a lowrider, but will never see something like what we created. Right. So you got to, really, you got to be thankful for everything. We, just, we, we forget, but it's true. Right. You know what I mean? You, you're right. I understand. You yeah. gotta be good to people while you're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do the best you can. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it was a pleasure and an honor to interview you, Sal. I appreciate you coming through and, and even being on the channel with me. Mm -hmm. And when I go to San Diego, I'm gonna call you. Oh, yeah. So we could go to TJ. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mexico. <laughs> But thank you, and I appreciate it. Yeah, love Everybody, you, Everybody, Sal Manzano, Toxic Rides. Thank you, sir.